Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Bissett Summerall with Telltale TV. Um, today I am super excited to be joined by Michael Winters, who you will definitely recognize as the iconic Taylor Dosey from Gilmore Girls. Michael, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Thank you very much for having me. You're hosting a really fun marathon, Gilmore Girls yeah. Marathon on Up TV. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I never knew it existed until they got in touch with me. But it turns out it up TV, which is out of Atlanta, I guess, uh, judge from the people I met that uh, they show Gilmore girls sort of on a regular basis. And then every year for the last, I don't know if I've got this right, five or six, I think they have done a binge -a uh Thanksgiving week in which they show every episode and the four Netflix movies of the reboot uh, and uh, 24 hours do the whole thing. They've had members of the cast host it and uh, uh, introduce segments and, you know, uh, do some of the uh, uh, quizzing and stuff like that. So um, it sounds really fun. And apparently it's a huge hit. People love it. And uh, so I was so glad to be a part of it. And they, they uh, came up here, got a crew up here, and we shot for one whole day and uh, did all these little introductions. And it was really fun. And it was like, <clears throat> It was almost like the reboot where we were all so happy to see each other again, you know, and it was, it was nostalgic for, uh, uh, for those of us who did it, who spent so many years doing it. Coming together for the, the revival series, what was that like a few years ago with that nostalgia? That was, it had, it had everything going for it. it. We were all back together. We were all employed. We loved that. And it, we had been apart for several years between the end of the real season and the reboot, and everybody was back, you know, except Ed Herman, of course, who had uh, passed away. But the, it was just joyful, and we all knew how long it was going to be because during the regular shoot of it, in in you know, in the regular series, it was a long haul. Uh, it was an hour show, so that every you know, uh, shooting every episode was many hours. Those girls worked like deck hands you know they just worked so hard and everybody did and uh and and we knew that it was only going to be three months all together in fact I didn't even work that much I just went down there for six weeks I guess and stayed down and, and did my little parts because they shot all four movies simultaneously so during a day you might be working in two or three of the movies you know you do a scene here do a scene there and uh uh, Amy and Dan, uh, who uh, were the parents of the, the series, they wrote and directed all of it. So they were constantly working, jumping back and forth from one to the other. So it was a lot of work, but it was so well organized and everybody was so happy to be there that it just, it, it was like a holiday. You know, it certainly was for me because I, uh, you know, I didn't have all that much to do. And then I was down there the whole time. I got to spend a lot of time with friends in the LA and, the, and that, and then do the work. And uh, it was great. Kind of going back to the beginning of the series, did you always know that your character would be part of it for the long haul or? No idea. It was such, a, it was a typical Los Angeles thing for an actor. It was an audition that was said for a four episode arc with a possibility of uh, recurring. Well, they, they always tell you that, you know, they always would say that it would never happen. You know, you'd go, you do your four episodes and that would sort of be it. So that was this again, and I didn't even think about it. And, uh, and then next thing I knew, they're saying, well, can you come back and you do this? You, I said, well, you know, I'm go back and forth between here and Seattle. I live in Seattle and I do theater up there. And they said, well, it's a fine, we'll fly you down whenever we want you to be here. So it turned out that I would stay in LA for the season. Then I'd usually come up here in the summer over the first you know, seven years or whatever it was. Uh, and I'd come up here in the summer and I would say every year, if you can, don't write me into the first episode because it will start shooting while I'm still up here doing a play. And they said, okay, we got it. And every season I would be in that episode. I think they, they made a point of getting most of the cast into the first episode of the season. And so, so I would have to do a thing where I would, uh, my, one Monday was my day off. And before the, uh, before 9-11 even, I would get the last flight out of Seattle 
a red eye at night and fly uh, down either to LA or a couple of times I had to fly to Las Vegas and spend the night and get up early and hop over to LA and just shoot for a day. They had to do everything that I ha had to do in a day. And then I would come back on Tuesday for a show Tuesday night. That happened several years in a row. And one of the things that everybody always talks about uh, is the dialogue um, and the speed of it. So ha was that a challenge for you? How did that? Uh, it, it's challenging, mainly because I'm used to the theater where you have a long time to rehearse. So you have time to know exactly what you're doing, spend a lot of time learning the language. These, no, you show up, you know the words. And um, I had one of the writers once tell me, uh, my friend Dakin Matthews, who I've worked with in the theater a lot, who played uh, Professor Somebody at her high school, I think. And uh, they said to me that me and Dakin, they, they could write anything for us because we could learn long and complicated language. It wasn't easy, but it could be done. And they would write stuff um, for those town meetings for me that were just endless and complicated and and sort of uncut you know you had to learn big chunks of it and that was it was a challenge for me but it was fun it was a fun challenge too you know and it, it didn't quite overwhelm me um and it wasn't i wasn't there that often you know but uh, uh they loved as i love uh screwball comedy movies from the 30s and 40s and uh, so I was on their wavelength. I understood that exactly. And uh, so it was fun to be a part of that. You know. Yeah, I'm remembering um, some specific things as you're talking about that. I'm remembering this moment where, uh, gosh, I can't remember exactly, you know, where this even fell in the show, but I'm Taylor's sure explaining like the difference between like a cart kiosk and a cart kiosk kiosk or a cart, you know, and, <laughs> and everybody's exactly. like, what? <laughs> and I had, well, I had, I mean, one of the the really tough ones was, uh, do you remember the one where they did the living paintings? Yes. Uh, which was, of course, based on a thing they did down in Laguna Beach every year. It was a real thing. And I was the master of ceremonies for that. So it meant that I had to introduce all of the pictures, the, the uh, uh, tableau. And... Um, but what they did was shoot all the tableau first. And I sat around literally, literally all night long in a tuxedo waiting. Uh, and it was cold and they did all of that stuff. And then at the end of all of that, they let everybody go and I'm left to do all of the announcements in a row full of Italian names and and I got up there at the, at, you know, at the at the podium to do them, and the director said, "Now I don't want to um, uh, make you nervous, but um, the sun is going to come up in about twenty minutes, and we need to get this all shot because it's, the sun's going to be right in your face." So, boom! After sitting around all night, I had to do this endless list of, you know, introduction, introduction. There were four or five of them, with all the Italian names and everything. That's incredible. Um, what what were some of your favorite Taylor moments? Uh, the one I always tell is the one where I'm running for ombudsman and they set up somebody to um, run against me. And and where I usually win the election, I'm starting to lose it. And and uh, 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 Luke and uh, Laurel, I are sitting in the diner and th there's that big glass window that looks into my sweet shop and they look over and I'm sitting there in the dark uh, slumped over that I'm obviously very unhappy about the way things are going and then from the bottom of the frame I pick up a can of ready whip and just spray a whole thing of it in my mouth to make myself feel better it was great it had no dialogue it just had that one shot but that I, that's one of the things I remember most of, about it's just a silly fun thing I loved having uh, once I broke my foot I was in Seattle I'd been doing a play and I was about to go back down and, and do the first episode and uh, I fell and I broke my foot and so I called him and said you know I'm about to get in the car to drive down there and I don't know how well I can walk I can drive but I don't know about walking and they said, oh, don't worry about it. We'll figure something out. By the time I got there, they had written in a fact that I had slipped on a banana peel that somebody had left on my doorstep or something and got me an electric wheelchair. 
and wrote that into the episode. Well, I got pretty good on the electric wheelchair. And <laughs> I, I thought it was so much fun. And I thought there's a lot of possibilities. Um, I hope they keep writing it in. And you never heard a word of it again. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome that they they did that so quickly, though. Oh, man, just no problem. No, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. And I remember the other thing. God, I hadn't thought about this for a while. But there was one season where I the play that I was doing up here in Seattle, I had to shave for because, you know, usually I have the beard. Uh, but I had had the beard on the show. And so when I went back down, they had to put a... With makeup, they put a fake beard on me. They didn't build a beard. The makeup lady faked it. I, I, it was astounding. And I wasn't the only one. There were other people who had done stuff, uh, you know, that they had to get fixed. It was the beginning of a season. I would never been aware of that before, because, but you go away and you just do whatever you're going to do. And then suddenly it's time to be Taylor again, you know, and you need the beard and all that stuff. Well, I think a lot about Taylor and Luke uh, and their sort of, rivalry throughout yeah. the show um how much fun was that to play do you have any it was great i i got along with uh him so well scott and i uh were quite friendly and uh, uh i enjoyed his company very much and so it was fun and and you know that's good stuff to play you know the, you, there's something really active about those things the very very first thing i shot i can still remember it was like the oh fourth or fifth episode of the whole thing and it was, I was putting uh, a, a Halloween display on the steps of the diner. And he didn't want anything on the steps of the diner. And that was the first, you know, that was the first spark. So one of my first days at work, he and I are nose to nose, you know, arguing and gesturing and stuff like that. Little did I know that that would become, you know, the fact of my life for another seven years or so. <laughs> uh, they were fun. They were always fun. What about Taylor and Kirk? I feel like there were a lot of um, interesting uh, things going on between those two. Any favorite Taylor and Kirk moments or? Uh, no, they were all, he was just such a goofball. Uh, he was, um, uh, you know, early in the, in the uh, series, uh, and I started working on it before it any of it had aired. So I didn't know what, what this was. I mean, at, at the audition, I remember thinking, I'm not sure what this is this supposed to be really funny or is it just kind of sweet or you know what is it um mm -hmm. and he uh, uh sean was uh he was in all the time I, they really liked him but he was somebody different every episode until finally after a while he settled into being kirk and he was, he was the same thing and so once my track got sort of clear what 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 uh, uh, what Taylor's going to be, then what Kirk was going to be got clear. And that's when we sort of started to uh, not clash really, but um, he was just one more obstacle to Taylor's getting everything just right, you mm -hmm. know? And, uh, and Kirk was always there to throw a monkey wrench into the works or, or just distract somehow. But again, like with Luke, th those are good things to act. They're active. Plus, he was just, is just a sweet guy. And looking back on it, what was your favorite thing about being able to be a part of the show just overall? Well, oh, many, many, many things. One of which was to have a long-term job like that. I mean, there's nothing like that when you're an actor. Nothing like it. The fact that when I went to work, I knew I was going to work on quality stuff. That it was not going to be junk. You know, that they cared about it. And uh, and the two of them were very, very hands on. Well, she was more hands on than he was. He's uh, Dan Palladino. This is uh, he's just a, a quiet guy who would go right, you know, but she was always there um, uh, running things. And um, they were just so into what they were doing. You know, they were they were really married to it. Uh, then they moved on to. Uh, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is their show too. And that got them the kind of recognition uh, as creators that I think they got cheated out of on Gilmore Girls. Uh, you know, even when Gilmore Girls was was running regularly, there would be talk every once in a while about why isn't there, aren't there any nominations ever for this show? You know, this, this should be, uh, I, I thought that was true of uh, Lauren, that she should have gotten much more recognition than she uh, than she did. So 
they, they, they were great to work for. And I just think they, uh, they should have got more focus. Definitely. You and I were talking a little bit before um, just about the, the amount of people the show has reached over so many years. Why do you think that is? There is something at the core of it that's just recognizable. Um, even though it's a fantasy world, you know, it's a very nice uh, comfort, as you say, comfort fantasy world. But there's something true in the middle of that. And of course, most of the people who stop me and want to talk about it are women, either mothers or daughters, and they have a real life connection to what that did for their relationship with their mother or their daughter. And I think however romanticized it is or prettied up or whatever, um, it's true in there. And I think it, uh, maybe that's too big a claim, but I think it changed some people's lives, you know, that, that girls, you know, adolescent girls, not sure what their relationship with their mother is gonna be. Uh, and that did something, you know, I, I don't know what, not a mother, not a daughter. So I don't know, but uh, that's the the reflection I get when people talk to me, you know, what it meant to them. And then it allows you when you're older to remember that time and the good, the good thing in that time. Uh, the other thing about it is that um, Warner Brothers and WB was uh, their main slot of shows were those sexy uh beach town things this was the sort of antidote i always used to think to that for warner brothers tv and so it gave you that other side that that uh, warmer sweeter down home thing that uh, that yeah. the other ones uh, didn't and uh i guess people like to remember that but uh like uh, uh um so many people i know or not know but have met who say, oh yeah, I've seen the whole series six, seven times. You know, sit down and, and make do their own binge-a-thon. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense, I guess. Yeah, I mean, well, me personally, I've probably seen it all the way through more more, <laughs> more than six or seven times, um, you know, as a, as a long time fan. Uh, but I think that's a, a good way to kind of bring us back just to talk a little bit more about this marathon um, because that is, something that's going to make that really exciting for people to see and and must be what what makes that so popular i i think it has been building i mean i'm i'm uh, as i told you i i didn't even know it existed until like august when they first called me about it and um uh, and then talking to uh, th there were a couple of people from their office in atlanta from the from the channel and talking about how successful it's been, how popular it is. But I mean, I, I know that anyway, from just meeting people, it doesn't happen often, but just enough to be nice, you know, that somebody says, oh, you're so-and-so from uh, Gilmore Girls. And I love, I grew up with Gilmore Girls and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and passes on from generation to generation. Yeah. But the number of people who have seen that the whole thing multiple times, I, do, I never have sat down and watched it from beginning to end. I mean, I've seen it all now. In fact, I have never seen, probably because I'm not in it, I have never watched the, um, the final movie. Uh, um, I did see the other three on Netflix, but I never, I just, I don't know, I never, I just thought, well, I'm not there, who cares? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I mean, not that I had that much to do in, in them anyway. But, uh, right. Well, I think you should watch it from beginning to. I guess to I end. should. I guess I, <laughs> I own it. God knows. Well, thank you, Michael, so much for taking the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. This was such a pleasure. Yeah, it was fun talking.